So for this wrap up section, I just want to sort of talk about um, some of the things we didn't talk about and where you can find materials to uh, look up that content. A lot of it is already available online. We'll talk a little bit about mechanisms by which you can communicate with developers and keep in touch and post issues and questions and, and discuss bugs. And then we'll look a little further ahead and say some of the cool research stuff that's being worked on in uh, Chris's lab, uh, Hazy Research, the sort of um, furnace of a lot of this cool snorkel stuff. And then, yeah, and we'll just open it up for comments uh, from you guys sort of on the day or any other questions regarding um, snorkel and so forth. So. All right, so uh, throughout the lectures and hands-on yesterday, there are a lot of points where I, I would say something like, uh, yeah, that deals with candidate extraction, don't worry about it, or, you know, oh, we could use a categorical classification, don't worry about it. Um, that's a, a tool for annotation, we have that, don't worry about it. A lot of this stuff, um, there's a huge space of advanced tutorials that you can reference to use when you're actually building a real application. And so for the spouse stuff we, we put together, um, we hit as much as we possibly could to keep it focused on the labeling functions, which really is the heart of uh, doing application development. But there's this huge space of really useful stuff that we, we've already generated and a lot of people in the lab have put work into putting online in polished forms. So I just wanted to walk through a brief list of some of the other stuff you should, should definitely take a look at as you sort of uh, start sitting down and writing your real applications. So the first, the biggest one is the sort of uh, piece we did the most hand-waving with, which is the pre-processing and candidate extraction. And like I've told uh, a couple of you pairwise, um, this is sort of a very application-specific step. Um, there's a lot of tedious post-processing. Snorkel includes a lot of tools to do a lot of this for you. Um, but the stuff like candidate uh, design is very tooled to what you want to do. Um, we have a tutorial. I, it's in the workshop notebook under advanced tutorials. I encourage you to look at it. Um, it'll be what generated the spouse database we used yesterday. Um, so that's a, a reasonable place to start. Um, but that's probably the place where um, the most questions could creep up. And it's definitely like a sort of a pain point um, in the snorkel development pipeline that we hope to um, improve as we bring more and more sort of cool automation and machine learning and auto LF generation type of stuff online. Uh, you saw a little bit of this uh, machine learning idea of hyperparameter tuning where we do some search for um, good, uh, can, good parameters to tune model training. Um, there, uh, I think we saw those for the generative model, but there is a more advanced notebook on how you can really dig in and do hyperparameter tuning with a discriminative model. Um, that's a little model specific, um, but we have information there. So when you build your real, um, uh, real models, you'll definitely want to tune them to get the best performance possible. And you should look at that tutorial and uh, 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 sort of formulate how you could integrate that into your pipeline. Uh, categorical classification, we've mentioned a couple times. That's if you want to do things beyond binary classification. That is a lot of problems, so it's a very powerful thing to think about is, as Alex said, it's a more um, uncharted territory for the lab in the sense of how easy is it to write labeling functions, what are the performance trade-offs. So if you have sort of cool applications you're thinking about in that space and things you want to develop, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us and, and talk about it. We'd love to hear more thoughts on um, uh, those type of problems. And then uh, the BRAT annotator tool, when you build gold labeled data, we've built um, some preliminary tools to make that process easier. Um, I'm the uh, principal person who built that, so if you have questions, go ahead and ping me, um, and I'm happy to answer uh, what I can. And then we have um, a couple other tutorials that may be appropriate for your task. One is on crowdsourcing. So if you had crowdsourcing data, how could you integrate that naturally into an information extraction problem? And then uh, some of the, probably the most relevant for our, us today we have an advanced biomedical information extraction tutorial for chemical disease relations. And that um, is worth it. Uh, it, uh, if you, it should look similar to a lot of the types of problems you guys have been discussing. So please, please check that out. These, all the material I described to you is on GitHub. And GitHub is like the, the focus point of all things snorkel. Uh, so please 
go there, check out our code. There is a big issues tracker. GitHub is a very nice system for keeping uh, logs of um, issues people have. We have a sort of nice um, schema for tagging uh, uh, types of issues. So please, if you find a bug, tag it, throw it up as a bug. If you, find, if you just have a general question or a comment or, or a desire for improvement, don't hesitate to just throw it up on the issues list. It's a big community of people doing snorkel development. We'll look at it and we'll respond usually within a day. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, there's also a mailing list that you can subscribe to through Stanford. It's just the Stanford standard mailing list, uh, snorkel dev. If you're on campus, uh, there are weekly office hours for snorkel developers from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. in Gates, that's the computer science building, in room 415. Um, those um, are pretty bustling, so it, if, if you really want to come, it's good to come early and try to grab somebody's time. Um, and, but they've been very helpful in sorting out problems, starting new collaborations, all kinds of interesting cool stuff has started there. And uh, finally, if you're really interested in diving into the technical guts of a lot of this stuff, um, there are research blogs. They do sort of a nice um, a balance between pop understandability and pointers to the sort of technical nuggets. And of course, you can always refer directly to the papers which these blogs will cite. And these will provide the theory and formalisms underlying data programming, which is the um, machine learning contribution that powers Snorkel. Uh, Stevens uh, dependency learning stuff, all of these sort of uh, cool technological contributions, um, the blog is the right place to start to, to dive in there. Finally, uh, as uh, I told a couple people and Alex mentioned, we do have a not quite working in the latest version of Snorkel, BioCorpus, um, which is a 142 gigabyte Snorkel ready dump of PubMed abstracts. And this is um, only partly our contribution. This is a lot of work by the PubTater folks, which um, is a group that has taken a lot of state-of-the-art uh, NLM-funded taggers and pre-processed all of PubMed for you. So these things are like genes, diseases, chemicals, species name, mutations. So these aren't perfect, they're pr but they're a pretty good like s jumping off point to use for your uh, particular task. And these are all, um, you can uh, search up these names, but they all, as of like two or three years ago, were pretty close to state of the art on their respective benchmarks. Those are already baked in, they're imported into Snorkel. You can already start running analyses um, uh, much more quickly uh, than if you had to bake all this yourself. And like I said, it's not 100% online with the latest version, uh, but it'll be uh, updated shortly. So it's probably one of the most requested uh, sort of things to exist. And I think Alex and Steven put a lot of work into getting it ready, so, um, oh, Alex. oh, Alex, so. How many abstracts is that? Uh, do you know, Alex, how many? <laughs> yeah, so, a pretty good resource. So it would be great in some future, uh, we'll do the same thing for like uh, full text and all of the, that was done for Deep Dive, which is another information extraction system. Um, yeah, I think, did you do the patents, Alex? Somebody did the patents corpus on. Yeah, I know, so, so yeah, someone, someone did it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those, like, time sinks. Like, it takes a lot of time to make it polished so that it I doesn't. Know, yeah, yeah, exactly. You need, <laughs> to, you need to find a master student who really. <laughs> I won't be able to share my work in history. But, um, yeah, so uh, it would be great. I think it would be great to have some. A tool centered around like a community data set like PubMed where people contribute labeling functions as some big crowdsourced effort. I think it'd be awesome. Um, but uh, you know, time is the enemy. But this is very useful. So we all this, a lot of the stuff like, the, like I did some work on NER um, using Snorkel and that was all done on, on PubMed abstracts. So something like this is super useful. Finally, uh, just looking forward, I want to talk about some of the um, extensions that are built on uh, the ideas that underpin Snorkel, uh, these concepts of weak supervision and how can we take um, a sort of uh, more removed, weaker sources of supervision but still train really robust, scalable models. Um, one cool thing that uh, a couple people have touched on is a lot of these scientific documents have uh, semi-structured data. This could be stuff like tables and you want to pull information out of tables, and sort of classically, that's been really tough. 
um, because tables have a highly variable form and they've just been difficult to work with in a robust way without building bespoke solutions for specific types. So um, a lot of collaborators in Chris's lab have spent a lot of time putting together this um, contribution built around snorkel called Fondur and it sort of specifies a way to uh, define labeling functions and extractors over tables. So stuff like uh, F FEC filings or crazy other forms, uh, Fondur is sort of a good approach to this. There is a blog post associated with it. They're all blog posts associated with this stuff. You guys should check it out if that um, fits your problem. Another cool thing that's in the, in the pipe um, is uh, a project being led by Paroma Varma. And you might have noticed like, Labeling functions are, are pretty powerful, right? Like we did a really good job today or yesterday of basically most everyone surpassed the performance as if they had hand labeled data. It would be really great if you could do something similar with other modalities. That could be images, you could be video, certainly medical imaging. How do you define labeling functions over these other primitives? And um, uh, Paroma is working on sort of this idea where you have another intermediary layer of abstraction that you can reason over with labeling functions and sort of learn more complicated uh, dependency structures potentially. And she's had some good results and these are, this is a work in progress. I don't think, um, it may or may not be on archive yet, but it's, um, it's been submitted some places. So the different types of modalities, different types of of, of data sets that you run classifications over. That's sort of the longer arc of Snorkel. Like, uh, like we talked about yesterday, um, we, we focused on machine reading and information extraction. But Snorkel is much more uh, uh, ambitious in how it uh, uh, views its role in, in machine learning. And that's to produce training sets. And there are lots of different things that we would like to classify over. So it's not just going to be text. It's going to be a much uh, cooler space of things. And with that, um, I just want to wrap it up. And I wanted to thank all of you guys for uh, joining us over these past two days and really helping us uh, uh, test our code and, and sort of, you know, challenge our assumptions of, you know, does it do what we hope it does? And uh, I hope you um, really felt it was worthwhile and had a good time. And it would hopefully enables you to do um, all kinds of really amazing stuff to really, you know, dip below the tip of the iceberg and unlock a lot of cool stuff. All of the content that you, the, the workshop content notebooks is online and I'll sync to make sure the most recent version is available. When we, we'll send a wrap up email with a survey sort of asking you questions about um, what you liked about the workshop, what you wish it had improved, et cetera, et cetera. And we can include um, a link to that repo